I am Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor, and um, I'm going to be painting a fun little pumpkin truck with you guys. This is actually our 12 inch size cutout. I use this a lot on um, a porch sign attachment because I'm not a wreath maker, but a lot of you guys are wreath makers, and so this will be a fun little attachment for a wreath. We are going to be painting that in our fall door hanger challenge, which begins August 17th. So if you've been thinking about learning to paint and um, dabbling in this, or you may want to just dip your toe in the water with it, this door hanger behind me is the one we're going to be teaching. It's actually a 20 inch size. And so um, you can participate for just $10. You get um, the printable template so that you can cut your own wood. And we have a video showing you how to use the template, how to trace it on the wood, how to cut the wood with a jigsaw. And then we have videos showing you how to do the buffalo plaid, the pumpkins, um, the lettering, the bow, all of, all different parts of it. I think there's like four or five different videos that break it down into a simple process for you. So you're not going to have to figure anything out. You're not going to have to try to like, you know, walk your way through this on your own. I'm going to hold your hand every step of the way. Um, <laughs> it is super cute, isn't it? I just love it. So um, if you guys want to participate in that, be sure and use Carrie's link. Now, if you are kind of like, now, Tamara, I just want to learn to paint. I don't want to have to try to cut that out myself and all of that. If you want to buy the wood cutout from us, you can get these wooden cutouts at 20% off. We've got a special coupon code for challenge participants that you can use. And so um, have no worries there. You'll get the coupon code after you join the challenge. And um, you can get either the 20 inch size, which is the size behind me, or you can get the 12 inch size like you see me painting right now um, and paint whatever you want. Whether you want to use it as a wreath attachment or as a door hanger, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter what size you get. Either way, we will be walking you through this. It's going to be the same process. Now, I'm painting this cute little pumpkin truck. Um, this is actually an older design of mine that I have recreated to include the interior lines and things because back when I first started door, doing door hangers, there wasn't such a thing as etching on the door hangers where you could paint inside the lines. Um, and so once I figured out that we could get the lines laser etched, we started remaking some of our older, more popular designs like this little truck. And so this, the design for this little truck isn't exactly available in my shop yet, but it will be on August 21st. We will have the template for you guys and the wood blank if you're interested in purchasing those. But we release new designs every single Friday, and I think that one's scheduled to release on August 1st. So technically, I'm painting it before it's released, which I don't, don't normally do. But I was in a mood to paint fall stuff. I'm so tired of painting summer stuff, so I'm kind of cheating and jumping ahead to fall. But um, anyways, this is a fun little truck. It's I'm painting it with the color called Sea Aqua. These are Deco Art Americana acrylic paints. I actually prefer the matte paints, not the gloss paints. I think they paint a little smoother. And then I add gloss later by sealing the entire thing when I'm done. And I'm painting on MDF. This is quarter inch MDF. That's what all of my door hangers are cut out of. And if you're going to be cutting your own, you may have a hard time finding this type of material in your shop, in your local hardware store. But you can get Revolution plywood, which is a really smooth, lightweight material as well. Um, I think the challenges are great because it gets a lot of you guys who have been watching for so long to actually try it. So, so many of you guys are watching this and like, I just wish I could paint. Like, I wish I could paint like her and like Tamara and Carrie. Like, they make it look easy and they're thinking that, but they're not actually putting what they're thinking into action. And so the challenges are designed to get you off your booty, to challenge you to try something new and to get you um, to believing in yourself that you actually can do this because anyone can learn how to paint. You do not have to have the skill set or the knowledge ahead of time. Like this is something you can learn how to do even with zero skill. And so if you follow my instructions and you don't skip ahead in the video and you just watch and follow instructions, you will find um, that you're able to do it just like I am. It may take a little practice. It may not come out exactly perfect in the beginning. Mine never come out exactly perfect, but um, you will get better with time. Okay, I've got two coats of the Sea Aqua on here. And let me see if you can see up close. So even with the two coats of paint on here, 
it's difficult to see in the right light on the camera, but I can still see the lettering. I'm trying to get it in the right angle so you can see, but I can still see the lettering etched in the surface. So I'm going to be able to freehand that lettering right back on there later, and it's not going to be a big deal. So um, let's switch colors. Somebody said, what's the difference between MDF and Revolution plywood? Let me show you, Laura. So this door hanger behind me was cut from Revolution plywood. And you see that it's got like a wood grain sort of look to it. It's a little bit lighter and thinner. This, the MDF, is more dense. It's a little bit heavier. Um, and it, it's about the same thickness. They're both about a quarter inch. But the MDF is much denser. And it's actually a little smoother, I think. It, it paints a little bit smoother. And it cuts like butter. But the MDF is difficult to find in most stores. So um, if you can't find the MDF, the Revolution plywood is a great alternative as well. I'm going to go ahead and start painting the little pumpkin here. Let me rinse my brush. Um, somebody in the last video I did asked, and I didn't even think to say this ahead of time, but after you guys paint these, I encourage you to go out and try to sell them or to teach them in a local paint party. And so all of the designs that I sell in my shop and all of the designs that we teach in my painter's clubhouse, you all are encouraged to use those in your local paint parties and to sell online or in person, whatever you choose to do. Um, I don't sell all of my designs as painted door hangers. Some of them I do and some of them I don't. But um, you guys are encouraged and completely free to take anything I teach you to paint and in, in any of the templates that I sell and um, sell your own creations using our templates. So just keep in mind that you don't, you know, you don't have to buy any special license or anything like that. You can do that. Okay, and then this little bitty pumpkin here, we're going to paint in like an off-white color. It's called Light Mocha. This is going to be one of those like cream colored pumpkins. We're just going to paint that, that color. And then I may add a little bit of shading. Let me get a really skinny um, angle tip brush. Let's see. I have a bunch of bigger ones. I need a little one. Here we go. This is a little bitty one. Let me get it damp. And then I'm going to use this burnt sienna color to do a little bit of shading on my pumpkin. My brush is going to have to be a little bit wet to be able to make this work. So taking a little bit of the burnt sienna and we're going to create little humps in our pumpkin. And then I may take a little bit of the light mocha and add a highlight in the middle of our pumpkins. This is the same thing that I will be teaching inside the challenge for how to paint the pumpkins that are behind me on this door hanger. So if you are kind of nervous about that, I walk you through it step by step. It's not difficult. Um, if you're intimidated by the shading and you're just like, Tamara, I can't do that part, it's totally okay. It will still be super cute even without the shading. But if you are the kind of person like me who you like to challenge yourself just a little bit, I encourage you to at least give it a try. Okay, I had to add just a little bit of water to my um, burnt sienna color because it had been sitting here a little while and started to get dried out. I used it on another project that I did earlier. So we're just adding the burnt sienna to the outer part and then the light mocha to the inner part. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I keep dipping my brush also back in the regular orange because that kind of keeps the color. It helps the colors blend, I think. Get a little bit of that burnt sienna and do down here at the bottom. There we go. A little bit of the, oh, that's too much. A little bit of that light mocha for the highlight right there. This just kind of gives your pumpkin a little bit of depth. I think it looks better. Do the same thing on this side. Adding the darker color to that outer edge and pulling it around. I'm also trying to bring it along where the pumpkin meets the truck, but not go over that line. Whoops. Accidentally got a little too much of that over the line. Let me get some of the regular orange and blend it. Now I'll get just a little bit of the 
light mocha in the orange. At this point, I'm blending like three colors at one time and kind of making a mess. But that's the fun part about it. It's it makes it more fun and artistic. Just keep blending. Just keep blending. Looks pretty good now. Not too bad. I'm going to take this color here. I need to add a little bit of water to it because it's gotten watered down. Or, I mean, it's gotten dried out. But I'm going to take this color that was the background color of our little pumpkin. I'm going to re-wet this. I'm almost putting like a second coat on here. But when I re-wet it, it kind of makes it more workable. And then I'm going to take just a touch. Where is that original color that I had? Here it is. Just a touch of this um, color called Pebble. Let me squirt just a little bit of it in one spot. I don't need much. And I'm going to take the long point of my angle tip brush and blend and make the pumpkin look more three-dimensional. I like using the angle tip brushes for this, but the trick is you got to make sure and keep the, the darker color on the longer point of the angle brush. And you got to keep it pointed the right direction all the time. So you really got to pay attention to how you're holding your brush so that you aren't smearing that color in the wrong spot. That's a little bit harsh right there. Let me blend that. And then I'm going to go back and get some of that original lighter color and kind of blend. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to take some green and my green is all dried up. This is called Hauser medium green. It's my favorite green. And um, we're going to use it to do the little leaves on the pumpkins. They're probably the easiest part of this entire thing to paint. The leaves and the stems. Okay, I'm going to dry my brush and then I'm going to get some of this dark chocolate brown. And I'm going to paint the little stems that color. There we go. And now we can go down and finish our truck up by painting the, the wheels and the tires. Um, yeah, door hanger painting is very addicting. I'm not sure why. I think it's just there's like a sense of pride and accomplishment. Um, I'm sure it's the same with wreath making. But, you know, as with any new skill, when you learn to do it and then you like, it, it's like you conquer your own doubt and belief in yourself that you thought you couldn't do it. And once you do do it, you're like so impressed with yourself. And so I think something about that is kind of addicting. Now I'm just taking this little color. It's called gray sky and I'm painting in the bumper and the windows. My painters clubhouse group opens August 25th. So if you're thinking about joining, I highly recommend that you start with the challenge and then you, after the challenge, you can join the membership. All right, got that background color of the thing. I'm going to get just a tiny bit of black on the tip of my brush and just kind of muss up the window just a little bit. I don't want it to be perfectly gray. So I'm going to take just a little bit of black and kind of just a teensy bit and just kind of add just a little bit of shadow to the window. get a little bit more. I keep rubbing, like I keep accidentally like messing up my shadow. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's do it. The, let's do the same thing the opposite direction. Let me get a little bit more. There we go. I kind of like that. That looks good. We'll stop there before, before we mess it up. Okay. And then I'm going to rinse my brush real quick and I'm going to get um, a little bit of yellow and do the headlight yellow. Whoops. I love this color. This is, um, it's called Sunshine Yellow, and it's one of DecoArt's patio paints. And I think the patio paint is a different formula of the acrylic paints, and I think it covers better. And so I've gotten to where I'm using this anytime I like a really light, bright yellow. It just covers way better. 
Okay. Oh, I forgot. And then we got to paint in the little tires with the gray also, or the wheels with gray. And then after this, we'll do our finishing touches and our lettering, and we'll be done. Um, so all of the videos will be uploaded to a password protected area. And then um, you'll actually have access also to a Facebook group where everybody will be um, sharing their pictures and asking questions and things like that. So it's going to be just like it is in the Painter's Clubhouse because in the Painter's Clubhouse, you have, ooh, let's do a little bit of shading on the truck too. Why not? Where's my shading brush? Let me switch shading brushes. Um, so in the Painter's Clubhouse, all of the videos, we have like two and a half years worth of videos of door hanger tutorials and techniques and awesome stuff. Um, those are all stored away behind a password protected area. We call it the vault. And um, you guys have access to that once you join. And so all of the fun stuff that happens happens inside the um, Facebook group. And that's where everybody shares their pictures. They ask for feedback and all of that. And it's just a wonderful way to get to know other painters and to kind of get help when you're learning a new skill. Let's do a little bit of shading on this truck. I'm going to have to rotate it. I apologize. But I'm going to add just a little bit of water and that sea aqua. That's all this is, is water and sea aqua to dampen that area. Then I'm going to get the tip corner. There's a fly in here. I'm going to get the tip corner and dip it in this bluegrass green. And it's a little bit darker. And we're just going to drag that up over the wheelbase to add a shadow. Let me get a little bit more of the sea aqua to blend. And so that makes that wheelbase a little bit darker around the outer edge. Do the same thing over here. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring it on down around the hub of the wheel. I'm having fun painting and playing today. I don't know if y'all can tell. I don't always do a ton of shading on my door hangers, but I'm in a shading kind of mood today. I think I just needed the painting therapy. Sometimes you just got to go with it. Let's do a little bit along the, um, the door where the door starts and stops right here. Like I said, this is one of the designs that we haven't released um, the updated version of in our shop yet. But all of our door hanger designs and templates are sold at shopdoorhangers.com. And so this design will be available August 21st. I'm just, I'm actually kind of ahead of paint, painting it before it's released. So I apologize that it's not available just yet, but it will be soon. So I'm just actually dipping in both colors at the same time. I'm dipping in the bluegrass green and in the sea aqua, but I'm only getting the bluegrass green on the tip of my brush. And then I'm letting that tip go around the outer edge of the truck. If you're using the blanks that we sell from our shop, like the one that I'm painting on right now, this one is actually etched. Now, if you're cutting your own, you can use the printable template and a piece of graphite paper to trace the design on your wood. That way um, you can still get the same finished look, even without an etched door hanger blank. But right now, the one I'm painting on is an etched blank. And so if you want to get an etched blank for the door hanger challenge, you can. I'll show you what those look like in just a moment. I've got them sitting down here beside me. Okay. Let me do a little bit. It looks like it's missing some up under the tr truck window here. That looks cute. Cute, cute, cute. Let me do a little line right here to kind of accent the front part of the door. Let me see if you guys can see that. It kind of just makes everything stand out in different parts of the truck. It looks a little harsh in the light on the camera, but in person it looks way more, whoops, I didn't mean to paint right over that. In person it looks um, way more like complimentary and blended.
than it does on camera right now for some reason. Let's finish up with our lettering and our highlights and all of that. I'm going to switch to a round tip brush and I've already got my black paint with a little bit of water in it. Um, the reason I water it down is so that the paint flows better when I do um, the finishing touches and the lettering. And so um, it just goes on much smoother. And we're just going to take this round tip brush and I'm painting inside the etched door hanger lines. So I'm not freehanding this. I'm just painting inside the lines like paint by number. Makes this so much simpler. I don't have to think about spacing or what my letters look like or any of that. paint inside the lines. I tend to get quiet when I start doing this part. I guess because it's like so relaxing and I'm concentrating and I quit talking. <laughs> not as hard as it looks I promise anybody can do it I love this this script it's kind of kind of messy kind of kind of fancy too I don't know how to explain it but it's real pretty It looks like somebody scrawled it across the door hanger real quick. This part's so relaxing. It's pretty cool. This is this is multi talented right here when you can trace inside the lines and hold your phone recording your hands painting the letters at the same time all while doing a Facebook live <laughs> and reading comments okay ta da <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got that done, I'm going to like rinse my brush so that it's nice and fresh, straighten my bristles, and we're going to get a little bit more black paint. Let me water, add a little bit more water to it because it's getting, it's trying to dry out on me. And then we're going to do our finishing touches. I'm just going to add some little lines. I'm going to try my best not to get my arm in this paint that I've just painted on the letters. And we're just going to add some little lines around the windows. Outline the window. Maybe add like a little line to the the head the headlight. Just gonna add some little black lines around the edge of the truck to kind of make it look more polished. Sometimes I like for things to look just a little bit more. I don't know. Like I like for the lines to be. A certain way but sometimes I like for things to look just a little bit more messy and artistic and so that's kind of what I'm doing right now I'm trying to be a little bit more messy with it it's not they're not perfectly straight lines like they would be if I was using um, a paint pen or something like that do a little bit on the pumpkin There we go. Now we need to go back and add just a little bit of white highlights and we'll be done. Is this not the cutest little track you've ever seen? You are a neat painter. You're an, oh, Linda, you can be a neat painter. I'm kind of a messy painter, but you know what? Um, if messy is your style, that's totally okay. Like there's not a wrong way really to do this. You just, it will just maybe your style and that there's nothing wrong with that. 
So I'm just adding a little bit of white highlights to different spots to kind of make the truck look messier, busier, cuter. Let's add a little bit to the fender wheels there. And the highlights. There we go. Maybe a little bit right there. I loved uh, painting with you guys. Y'all have been amazing. Thank y'all. Bye.